Fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. First, I want to give a shout out to Andy Roddick's new podcast, Served, that I listened to at the gym the other day. Really impressed. Very entertaining. Uh, lots of good takes from him and John Vertheim, uh, who has done, I think, two episodes together. Third one, probably going to be joined by John again. So great entertainment. He is quite active on Twitter, as you know, Andy Roddick as well, or X, or whatever you want to call it. And he tweeted out yesterday that he was looking for a new racket. And I got uh, added or whatever it's called uh, by a lot of people, which was uh, fun. So thanks for that, everyone who uh, told Andy that he should go and get advice from Tennis Nerd. So that was quite humbling. I really like that. Thanks for, for the support. So I decided to write a post and compile some ideas for Andy. He might never read it or look at it, but at least it's out there. I thought it was a pretty fun assignment to think about if he played tennis today. What would he use uh, going from his old racket to a new racket? Because he doesn't want to use bubble art. He actually stated that pretty quickly in a reply. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe something went south in their collaboration uh, after he retired. He did use the rackets but blacked out for a while. But now he's ready for a new brand. So which rackets and which brands should he consider? Uh, but the ones I thought about uh, when I started uh, doing some work on Andy Roddick's racket. I knew that he played with an extended pure drive. I'm not sure what specifications he had. He used lead tape at 3.9, pretty visible. He actually had his own signature model some years back. And if you don't remember Andy, or you're quite new to Tennis Nerd or new to, uh, to tennis as such, uh, he was a world number one. He won a Grand Slam at US Open. And, uh, you know, he would have won a lot more if it wasn't for a certain Roger Federer or maybe even Rafa Nadal and Novak Djokovic, of course. So born 82, like me, and um, and Roger is 81. So they were kind of from the same generation. And and Andy had, uh, you know, great serve, great forehand, uh, fought really hard. But there was a lot of Roger in the way for him. Uh, he still managed to get 32 titles. So he's quite, quite a player. And I was always a big fan of Andy. I liked his... His very straightforward, uh, honest approach in interviews. Uh, he was always funny in post-match uh, stuff on the court. And um, yeah, seemed, seems like a nice guy overall. And uh, someone who has a uh, you know, good mindset and good values and so on. His racket was a Pure Drive Plus. I don't know if it was the 2003 Team Edition. Uh, but there was something where the Cortex was painted. I have not seen many Andy Roddick rackets around. Uh, as you know, I'm, I have a Novak racket, I have an Agassi racket, I have a Haas and a few personal rackets. My buddy Nikki has Rafa's racket. Uh, I know plenty of people in the racket collection community, people who love to collect these types of rackets that have Roger and, and whatnot. And if you do own one or know the specifications, uh, let me know in the comments. I do know the, the strings are Hurricane Tour in the mains, 130 gauge and... Um, VS Touch Natural Gut in the crosses. Bubble out strings, pretty high tension. The sticker I've seen on his personal racket that was up for auction, it was 63 pounds. So that's pretty high. But, you know, with gut in a pure drive that's extended, you know, it makes sense to go pretty high to get some control. So what racket should Rodic use today? That was really the, the challenge here to figure out what he would use. And he doesn't want to use bubble out, otherwise it would have been easy to recommend a Pure Drive Plus and or a Pure Aero Plus. I, I like the Pure Aero, the new one, more than the, the Drive. And I also think it's dense enough as a pattern to get control for a player like Andy. and still offers a great serve. But bubble out of the question, uh, we need to look at other brands. And there are some brands that come quickly into mind. I look for power rackets that are extended because I think going from a 27.5 inch length racket to a standard racket is not going to be easy. Uh, he's been playing his whole career with this type of racket, so he needs to stay within that lane. There's no reason really to switch, in my opinion. So the Eson 100 Plus from Yonex was my first choice. I do, uh, I'm do. i a big fan of the Eson 100, something I play with in matches myself, customized uh, with some weight in the hoop. But it's it's a great frame. The Plus Edition will give you a bit more power and reach, especially better on serve. It's already a very good serving racket in standard length, but adding that extra half inch is going to give you more explosive power on the serve. So the Eason 100 Plus, a little bit more dampened, muted in feel than the old Pure Drives, uh, but also a bit more comfortable. And uh, yeah, you you need to get used to the head shape of the isometric head. That's really something with the, with the Yonex rackets. Yeah, I might have one here. 
Yeah, so as you can see here, the, the head shape is a little bit unorthodox, but that's what Yonix are famous for, and it does give you a little bit more of a sweet spot to work with. And yeah, great frame. I really like it. And uh, this racket I've been playing with a lot recently. Uh, then we have a Solinko Blackout XTD, also an extended frame. The Blackout is Solinko's power racket. They're more famous for their strings, but I think their rackets have taken a step in the right direction in recent times and are pretty good. Uh, the Bryan Brothers uh, are still using, I mean, I'm not sure how much they're playing now, maybe some exhibitions, but they did transition over to Blackout rackets in their career as well. Uh, so these frames are good, and it could be something that is an even easier transition for Andy going from Babola to Solinko instead of Ionix with the isometric head shape, a little bit different feel. Although I do personally prefer the Ionix E-Zone over the Solinko Blackout, but this is all a personal preference, of course. Then we have the Diadem Nova, the version 3 Plus. This is not the Plus, but it looks like this. Uh, I play with standard length. I really like this one, the Tour Edition. Uh, it's a great frame, and I'm pretty reminiscent of the Pure Drive with some dampening inside, so a bit better comfort. Uh, but feel-wise, mold-wise, it's very, very similar. So I think this would be an easy transition for Andy. Then uh, I went a little bit out there for the fourth and last recommendation. I went to a Wilson Blade 104 version 9. The Wilson Blade 104 is a racket that is often like overlooked. You know, I will publish a video very soon where my buddy Sergio talks about his racket, and that is a Blade 104. And he was an ATP Pro player some years back. Uh, he's 50 now, but uh, he, he, he plays with this one. He plays high-level Spanish leagues and so for his age group. Uh, still competes at a high level, still hits with, with futures players and can do so well. But he has customized his Blade 104. He uses the V8 with uh, lead tape at 3 and 9. And he plays really well with it. it gives him a good forgiving sweet spot. But it's also uh, good, good enough control uh, to play at a high level. So that racket is a little bit less powerful and with a slightly larger head size than the other suggested rackets. But I definitely think it should be there on the list. And it will also allow a little bit maybe lower string tension in a way that it, it has a bit lower stiffness. So not the same power. So those are the four recommended rackets on, from me. Uh, the Eason 100 Plus, the Solinko Blackout XTD, the Diadem Nova version 3 Plus, and the Wilson Blade 104. V9 or V8, doesn't matter really. I haven't properly tried the V9 yet, so we'll get to that. Those are all good rackets, I think, uh, that Andy would not have a problem transitioning to. Obviously, he would need to customize them to his spec. I mean, he's a pro player. He has played for so many years with one specification. It's not going to be easy to just take a different racket and play uh, on the level that he wants to play. You obviously want to play well, even if you're not uh, active on the tour anymore. And he's probably going to do more coaching assignments in the future. I can foresee that. He has his media engagement and the podcast. But he was also helping Coco Goff with her serve recently. And I can foresee more stuff uh, with Andy in tennis and coaching in the future. He's a great guy to have around and uh, fun to see him uh, doing more and more active work on the different tours. So that's it. Those are my suggestions for Andy Roddick's next racket. He's not an active player, but he's a legend in the game. And I wanted to give my best shot at giving him a good, uh, a good few options to transition into from his Babolat Pure Drive Plus. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you need help choosing a racket, there's a consultation service on TennisNerd.net. And there's also the Tennis Nerd Guide to Rackets and Strings, where you can learn more about this topic and also about what other pro, pro players use. Yeah, plenty of information there. Uh, thanks for subscribing and being a part of the Tennis Nerd community. That's it for now. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.